Hello. In the first part of this tutorial, we will show you how to register a database for use in IB Expert and help you get acquainted with the IB Expert environment. So, we begin by starting our newly installed IB Expert trial version and are immediately asked if we prefer the single document interface as opposed to multiple document interface. The multiple document interface, or MDI, displays all IB Expert windows in the foreground within a single background window. You cannot move any of the IB Expert windows outside the main IB Expert area. With a single document interface, or SDI, you can move each individual IB Expert window around as you wish. This can be advantageous if you work with multiple screens. It does, however, have the disadvantage that you easily accidentally move a window off screen and out of sight. My personal preference is the multiple document interface, because with this you don't see all the desktop elements in the background. I will therefore answer this question here with no. Here we can see the IB Expert splash screen. We can view the IB Expert license type, the version number, and a comment that we may now use this IB Expert version to register databases. There is also a comment informing you about the IB Expert newsletter. We recommend you register as soon as possible at the IB Expert Download Center and subscribe to our newsletter so that you are ensured of receiving all up to date IB Expert and Firebird information. Here you can see a small proportional window. This is part of IB Expert Direct. In this case, we are informing all IB Expert users of the forthcoming Firebird conference being held in Bremen, Germany from the 11th to the 13th of November 2010 and organized by ourselves, IB Expert KG. You can find further information about this conference at www.firebird-conference.com. Here you can see the web address of the IB Expert Download Center, where you can register for the newsletter and download our written documentation. In the main IB Expert Direct window, you can see a variety of information, all linked. So, the first thing I will do in IB Expert is to register a database for work in IB Expert. For this, we use the menu item, Database, Register Database. In this installation, we will access the database via localhost. If you have already viewed the first tutorial about multiple Firebird installations and have installed multiple Firebird servers on your own machine, then you will know that we need to specify the port number defined at the time of installation. Here, for example, I have installed the Firebird 2.5 Super Classic server locally on my PC. If, however, you have installed your Firebird server using the setup file and have not specified the port number yourself, then you can either leave it out here or you can enter 3050, the default port number for Firebird and Interbase installations, upon which the respective Firebird and Interbase TCP IP services run. If you wish to connect to a remote server, then you need to enter the server name before the port number. For example, server name slash 3050. It is important to note that there is also a so-called local protocol. Up here, we can switch between remote and local. If you select local here and have, for example, multiple local Firebird installations, then you may encounter the problem that the database server is not recognized. This is due, among other reasons, to the TCP IP settings, particularly on certain Windows versions such as Vista and Windows 7. I therefore recommend always selecting remote. And, if your server is installed locally, localhost followed by a slash and the port number. And if you don't know the port number, don't forget, enter 3050. Here, I have entered the port number I specified myself in the Fiber configuration file. 
The server version here is important for IB Expert so that it can recognize which keywords are correct for each of the server versions. I have installed Fiber 2.5. Here, I select the database file I wish to register and work with. I've installed my Firebird server on C in the FB directory and in the folder FB25 underscore W64, that is the Windows 64-bit version, and I've added the suffix SC for Super Classic. For those of you who also wish to install multiple instances of Firebird and learn a little more about the different Firebird versions, please view our first tutorial, Firebird Installations. In the Examples directory, in the Build folder, you will find the employee.fdb file, which is the database I'm going to register here. I'm going to register this database with an alias name for IB Expert use. This alias name has absolutely nothing to do with a Firebird alias. The Firebird alias is an entry in the alias.conf file, which has nothing to do with this alias. An alias.conf entry would be entered here. I'll tell you more about that, though, in a future tutorial. The standard user, which we can use to access this database, is sysdba, with the password master key. And you may already know that the Y in master key may be left out, as Firebird only checks the first eight digits or characters. So you may enter the password M-A-S-T-E-R-K-E. -E. It will also be accepted. The role here is a role membership. At the moment, I will not use this. And the character set can be selected here, for example, UTF-8 and so on. I will go into detail about character sets when I later show you how to create a database. As this database was created with the character set none, I will also use the character set none here. So, now we go to register. And you can see the registered database here on the left in the database explorer. To test whether it works, simply double click on the database name. And here you can see the error message that the gds32.dll is missing. This error only arises when you work on a 64-bit server with a 32-bit program such as IB Expert. So, I'll simply go back into the database registration info where I can explicitly specify the client library file. Here I simply select a 32-bit Firebird Here are my 64-bit Firebird installations. And in this case, I will select the Firebird 2.1 DLL from the bin directory, fbclient.dll. This Firebird client file needs to fit to the program. IB Expert is a 32-bit program, so I need a 32-bit DLL. You will not experience any difficulties using the 32-bit client library to access the 64-bit 2.5 Firebird version. So I click off OK and double-click off my registered database in the Database Explorer again. And now you can see I have a connection. Should you still encounter problems, I'll disconnect from my database here to illustrate this, Go back to the database registration info by right-clicking on the database name and try a test connect. Here you can clearly see that the database has been found. Should you not get an answer from your server, then it is often due to a wrong port number or one of your other specifications is perhaps incorrect. To test whether you can reach your server at all, go to the TCP IP page. Here you can, for example, send a ping command. When you click on test, you can see whether the remote side is actually configured to answer a ping. Here I need to specify the service. And here you can see that the server localhost answers my ping command. 
we can, of course, ping any other internet service here. For example, if we ping google.com, we get an answer on this IP address. If you can't get an answer this way, then you have a network problem which you need to solve before you can reach a remote Firebird server. The NetBuoy protocol isn't really necessary nowadays as it is hardly used in this age of the internet. The same applies to SPX, which is an old Novell protocol that is rarely still in use. So, your test connection should now be successful, and when this is the case, we can save the specifications by clicking on OK and closing the registration window. This tutorial, Register Database, now continues in part two.